Hello friends, it's Kayla. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a reading vlog, reading books that I have no justification for why I even own. That means we are delving into the TBR closet. In this home there are three places where books live. I have my big bookshelves in the living room where I put all the books that I've read. I have a TBR shelf in the bedroom where I put like top priority TBR books. There's always a hundred there. And then I have this that I like to call where my TBR goes to die. There's always 200 books in here. They're on a constant rotation. I read between two and 300 books a year. Somebody left a comment on, I can't find it now, but I think it was a book haul where I literally bought a book and said, I don't know why I bought this. And somebody said, you should do a video where you read the books that you don't know why you bought. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna find like four or five things. I'll give you a quick overview. It really is only loosely, loosely organized in here, but the top two shelves are authors that I've read from before and I just own something else from them, so they're here because I know I bought them because I know I well for the most part I know that I like the author <laughs> and then if we move down the next two shelves are just books that I heard about <laughs> there's pretty much any and every genre in here but it's just books that sounded interesting I have no experience with that author and then the very bottom shelf down here is things that I just shoved that I don't know that I'll ever really get to <laughs> that are mostly YA and romance which I have like an on and off relationship with. And as you could see, every shelf is two layers deep. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Things that I'm excited about, things that I wanna read, things that I don't know when I'll ever get to. But almost every book in here, there is a reason why I own it. I've read from these authors before and when I see their books on sale, I buy them because I know I'm probably gonna read them again someday. My Kurt Vonnegut collection is obviously out of hand, but I have a reason for them. I, I know that I wanna read them. I own these because they're short story collections. I love an anthology and for the most part, I Every single one in here should have an author in it that I've read from before, which is how I originally heard of the anthology. The only thing that I would consider really questionable in the top two shelves is these are series, there's a couple more in here, that are part of series and for the most part I buy the sequel when I've already read the first book and so I know that I want to read the next one. When I eventually read the sequel to Fina, I'm sure I'll love it. When I read the sequel to The Marrow Thieves, I'm sure I'll love it. Dustlands is haunting me a little bit because I really want to finish this out. But the one in here that really makes no sense is a romance. It's called Last Kiss by Laurel and Page. I read the first book I wanna say in 2015 when I was being really critical of romance but trying to find ones that I liked and I kinda didn't, including this one. I, I didn't like this book, but I remember there being some kind of uh, twist or cliffhanger at the end that made me pick this up immediately and it's just sat here. And I literally don't remember the plot. I think there's a girl and she gets involved with a guy who used to date her best friend and maybe her best friend's missing and maybe he's responsible, something like that. That's the first thing that I am reluctantly adding to my TBR because I can't unhaul this without giving it a chance. Now come closer and let's move down a little. I feel like normally my TBRs are really enthusiastic. Clearly like this is not something I wanna be doing, but also clearing out this TBR closet just sounds like a lot of fun. Let me give you an excuse for some of these. This. I don't know if I want to read, but I know why I own it because my mom gave it to me and said it was good. This I saw one person on the internet one time say was good, so I bought it. This was in a list on, I think, a Book Riot website about books that would make good book club selections. I never selected it, but now I own it. I bought these because they were at library book sales and they sounded interesting. This one was purely the cover. I was in the bookstore and I was struggling to find books that I wanted to buy. I think this is one that I drove kind of far to a thrift store I hadn't been to in a while and I didn't find anything. And I was like, I'm not leaving here without a book. So I grabbed this. It's lime green. It has a rabbit on the cover. Sure. Like I would never buy a pocket book like this. I would never buy part of a detective series because I don't think this is a cozy mystery. I think this is just going to be a stupid mystery and I can't believe I'm about to read this but I am. Another one down here is one that I absolutely bought with no reason except that I was at a bookstore. We were on a trip to Nacusp. It's the one where we were staying in that like dome house and I like couldn't find anything that I was interested in. There were four bookstores I think we stopped at and this might have been the first one and I was like okay this is just not the vibe. I'm not gonna find anything that I want and I was feeling disappointed so I just bought something. I bought this because it was short and it was inexpensive and I wanted a souvenir, I guess, from a store that we visited. I don't think I even read the synopsis of this. And also, I don't even like the cover. Like, what the fuck is this? Someone tell me what this is. There's like a pipe and an ax 
And I don't know, is that a pig? Is that a pig? Wait, because I have been reading more books with pigs on the cover lately. Oh, hey, I even have the receipt. I did indeed buy one book from Otter Books. It's called Conversation of the Three Wayfarers. So that's book number three. <laughs> oh, actually, here is another example, the perfect example. This, I was on a trip for work and we were in Vancouver and we were walking around the streets and I obviously love books. So the day that we had some free time in the morning, all the girls were like, let's go walk around, do some shopping. And they were so kind to come into all of the bookstores with me. And I think I just put pressure on myself to find something in every bookstore because also it's kind of a souvenir. This is from the most beautiful bookstore ever. It's so stuffed full, it's claustrophobic as hell. And I didn't want this. Like I, I have no idea what, I didn't know what this was. It's short stories, but I don't even think I grasped what the theme was. I believe I found it in like the local author section and that's just what made me grab it. It's called The Devil You Know by Jen Farrell. And this is one that I've considered unhauling over and over again from here every time I try to clear it out a little bit. But I'm like, I know where I bought it. It was like special in the moment. It was pouring rain that day. I remember having to stuff it in my jacket so it wouldn't get wet. And then I just carried around with me against my body for hours. And so I feel like we're connected. So those are the four we're gonna go with. Now, I feel like this might be a bit of a disappointing selection because there are books that I actively want to read in here and maybe you wanna see me read and review and instead I'm picking things that I have no reason for. I just found one that fell off the shelves um, that I'm also including because this is the exact same case as this one. I bought this one brand new because I was at a bookstore. I remember hunting the shelves for a couple books the day that I bought this and I couldn't find them in stock even though the website said they were in stock. So I went to like the $5 shelf and I bought the Tale of the Tailor and Three Dead Kings by Dan Jones because it was short and one of the cheapest things that I found. So I clearly have a problem, but these were all like a year ago at least. So I'm not actively doing this. So this is the journey that we're embarking on today. I don't think there's gonna be any hidden gems here, but I'm uh, willing to be surprised. I filmed that intro so long ago and I've decided I'm gonna read the selection now and I'm gonna make this into a 24 hour vlog. So I'm gonna read them all very quickly. First, I just spent so much time scouring my channel trying to find my review of First, is it First Touch or First Kiss? Next, I read First Touch by Laurelyn Page. For some reason, I deleted my Goodreads review of this so I couldn't see when I had read it, but I finally found the review, January, 2016. This is the first book and I think it's going to be a duology. Um, it's about a woman who she one day gets a phone call from her ex-best friend and she basically tells her that she needs help but she says it with like their secret code word they used to have and so she knows that her friend needs help but can't say it out loud because something bad is happening to her and so she needs to figure out what's going on. I gave this two stars. One because it was kind of fun and it was well paced. The other one was the ending. I 100% would have not picked up, I would have not planned to pick up the next novel that comes out in like five or six months if it wasn't for the ending. So I mean the author did her job, got me to pick up the subsequent novel. But three things I didn't like about it, there was way more sex than the synopsis led me to believe. This was not a thriller, it was like a dark erotica and I was not expecting that. Um, there was also a really unhealthy romanticized abusive relationship and our main character is just a complete idiot. I can't stand her. I can't stand anything she says or does or feels. I hate her completely. <laughs> Next I read Okay, so I still don't know the plot. So thanks 2016 me. Do I need to reread it? Considering I don't remember the ending that I'm referring to, I guess I'll read it. I can't believe I picked that up thinking that it was a thriller. I don't remember that being a thing. Okay, let me reread it eight years later and give you a quick summary of it. Complaining about the amount of steam in an erotic book is just really unhinged of me. I don't necessarily agree with myself that it's romanticizing a bad relationship because I don't think that the book needs to take a moral stance and I also don't think that these characters are unaware of the way that they're treating each other. They're both like fucked up 
and they get into this like kind of Fifty Shades of Grey-esque relationship. That's just what I'm comparing it to because I haven't read a lot of books of this nature. It's definitely not as questionable as Fifty Shades of Grey. She has a lot more experience um, than the main character, whatever her name was in that book, and she knows what she's getting into and she very much just wants to satisfy this man and be whatever this man wants because that's what will also make her happy. She doesn't really understand um, how to have a healthy relationship because her best friend got her into all of these, like she basically trafficked her and she's just been in a lot of fucked up experiences. And then this man is incredibly wealthy and you know, he has all these houses and all these hotels and whatever. And everywhere he goes, there's this huge team of security. I'm going to spoil this entire book because like, be honest, you're not going to read it. So Emily hatches this plan when her friend goes missing to figure out what happened to her friend because she was involved with this man and he apparently has mob ties. And um, so she wants to get in bed with him him, which she successfully does and find out what happened and through the book she finds out that her friend is not dead she like thought she was dead but she's just kind of missing which is not as big of a deal as it was before and so she's just kind of sleeping with this man and like falling in love with him his name's Reeve and at first he's just like you're gonna do everything that I want you to do I get to boss you around like you're gonna I have full control over you and your life and then throughout the book they open up to each other and they realize that the relationship they both want more from it. And there's this moment where they reveal to each other, um, like the big impact, like the, the worst thing that's ever happened to either of them. And it both revolves around this girl, Amber. And when they're each telling their story, she knows that she she knows that her story and his story are the same woman, basically, like, Amber did fucked up stuff with him like didn't end up wanting to be together after all and she tried to leave and he like held her captive kind of <laughs> and that's the worst thing that he ever did and then she reveals the worst thing she ever did also involved Amber and why their friendship ended um and she got horrifically abused and abused by this man that Emily and Amber were both involved with and then she like pissed off her friend and that's when she went missing and she's on drugs and she's um now being trafficked herself and Emily wants to save her from that and so she's putting all these pieces together throughout it and then they get closer she's falling for him but it's under false pretenses because she's just supposed to be there to spy on him and he's also falling for her but doesn't know that she's there to spy on him. And naturally like the reveal of the book is that Amber is alive um, and at the end she comes to like the compound where they are and she's like injured and someone carries her into the house and like Amber's there and so she had this big falling out with both of these people and now it's like everything's gonna get revealed that Emily was doing things secretly behind his back and like investigating asking all of his team questions about his like past girlfriend to get an insight into who she was because she thinks that Reeve might have like sold her to somebody and like given her as a gift to like the mob or something. But all the while she's still like completely okay with fucking him constantly. And so that reveal at the end, obviously like it has an impact still, but it's the scene right before it that had me like, when they started getting closer, they had this moment where they asked each other if they've ever been in love before, which was like a big moment because they previously, it was just a sexual relationship. At least that's what they both agreed to. Um, and then she says no, and he says yes, he's been in love twice. And he says once with Amber, and then he doesn't tell her who the other person is. And then the scene, like right before they find Amber, like injured in the woods, um, he goes, the other person I was in love with, is her is her best friend, which is Emily. And Emily at this point doesn't know that he even knew Amber was her Amber. And so I was like, I literally took a picture of myself. This is the second time I read this book. It fucked me up. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. Anyway, so now I remember it all. And it's not so much that it was a shocking reveal, the ending, because you kind of saw it coming. It was just like how all the dominoes happened and the scene itself that made me want to read the next book. And I still feel that way in this moment. So I'm excited to continue. So the 24 hours commence right now. I'm gonna start this, I think on audio, cause that's how I just did um, First Touch. And I like the narrator, even though listening to sex scenes read out loud and so much of them um, is not my favorite. I kind of just want to fly through it at like three times speed, which is what I did with this one. And I still gleaned everything. So I'm also going to be physically reading Conversation of Three Wayfarers. So I'll update you about both of these soon.
honestly just feeling really good at this point about deciding to read these at the same time because one of them is practically unreadable and one of them is tolerable and it's probably not the ones that you think. I'm halfway through Conversations of Three Wayfarers by Peter Weiss and this is actually translated from German which I didn't know and so that's another translated book to add to my goal list of the year. Um, also this is not from the cusp it's Nelson. It is the correct trip that I was thinking of. I just got the name of the town wrong. Uh, that was a different trip that we took to Nacusp. I grabbed this which I don't know what it is, but it sounds weird. So if anybody from around this area was like, um, Otter Books is not in that city, you're correct. Please accept my apologies. I don't know what the fuck this book is doing. I don't understand. I don't know why. We are following kind of three people, Abel, Babel, and Cable, and they're having a conversation back and forth about their lives. Um, but it just is like blocks of text. Like it doesn't really introduce who's speaking and when and why ever. There's not a chapter distinguishing it, but I guess there are three different people speaking. That doesn't matter. Um, the actual story is about this couple who has six different children, um, Jam, Jem, Jim, Jom, and Joom, or something, and Jime or something like that. And it's just these random anecdotes about them, how like one of them was seen naked on a boat one time, how one of them, like, I don't even know. I literally don't know. I don't know what this is about. I don't know why it was written. I don't understand and I hate it. Now, last kiss, at least it's entertaining because now we have the three people who like he used to be in a relationship with both of them. And I feel like I'm way too far into this for nothing to have happened, but it's really just like our main character, Emily, being jealous that he's gonna get back with his ex her best friend and them trying to like salvage their friendship but also um i don't know just like they found her obviously in a really bad situation and they're trying to figure out what happened and she's really vulnerable and so like they don't want to put too much on her like they can't tell her everything about their own relationship it's just a lot of like personal stuff that is pretty high drama but I need some plot to happen, so we'll see. Oh, we'll see. I'm taking a brief intermission from my 24 hour vlog to go on a date with my husband. We're dropping Liam off at a hockey game and then we're going to see Dune too, finally. I finished, I'm not crying, I just put in eye drops. Um, I finished these two books and I did not like them. This is a two, this is a one. Have no idea what the fuck this book was doing or saying or why. I don't know, like this narrator was invited to a house and he was suddenly doing an obstacle course, jumping between chairs. Like everything on the cover has a purpose, has a little like mini story that's inside here, but they, they were all stupid. He was just like jumping from chair to chair and then he had to crawl under all the chairs and then suddenly he's naked. There was a fly that was as big as a man. There was a guy flying around on a broomstick. At one point there was a mannequin watching one of the men have sex. There was this couple and they had a baby and they were debating over things about the baby. They were talking about what wine glass to use for wine. Like it wasn't short stories though. It was just like this stream of consciousness like how random can I be? What's the most random sentence I can possibly craft and then just put it in a book? It felt kind of like um, watching Pink Floyd The Wall, like if it was muted, just like insanity, cartoons swirling around, men losing their absolute minds. I hated it a lot. And then um, Last Kiss was just pointless. It was like 300 pages of just this drama between the threesome. And then within 50 pages, these two said, I love you for the first time, broke up, Amber died, they got back together. Obviously nobody ever asked me to review Smut, like you don't want to hear my opinion on it. Um, and the language already cringes me out a lot of the time, so this didn't stand a chance. But it was like, the author got really tired of the word cunt, but that's the only word that she knew how to use. So it's just like cunt, 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 cunt. And then suddenly um, she decided to start using the word hole instead. Hole, constantly. Hole, touch my hole, tight hole, the big hole. Hole is not sexy, hole is not cute. Um, I didn't like it. Thank you very much, see you later. Hello, quick review of Dune. Actually not a review, just a, just a rating. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10, how about you? 
Yeah, eight, eight and a half. I wish I had rewatched the first one. If for you it has been a year since you watched the first one, rewatch it before going to see the second one. Yeah. Or watch it at all because we realized like halfway through the movie, maybe Rob never watched the first one and we just remembered it wrong. Also, I've even read the first two books and I still like was a little bit lost. Rob kept asking me questions and I was like, I'm not sure. But it was really good like for it being um, a two hour, 40 minute movie, it didn't feel like it. It kept my attention the entire time. It was super interesting. The visuals were incredible. Acting, cast, great. Any other thoughts? No. We're tired. We're going to bed. I'm gonna try to read a little bit of that bunny book before falling asleep and then I'll update you in the morning. Am I wearing the same thing I wore to the movie last night? Probably. I just really like this sweater and it shrunk a little bit so the other two that are different colors don't fit me as well. Um, I know that I the whole thing is to clear out the closet. Well actually no I wasn't clearing out the closet. I was only getting rid of five books but I am gonna go buy more books and I think that's okay. So we did some spring cleaning, so we're gonna donate some things and then I'm gonna go to some free little libraries because I have a whole bin of books I need to get rid of. And obviously since everyone's spring cleaning, then maybe the free little libraries will be full of really good stuff. So I'll take you with me. I don't wanna read any of the books that I picked because <laughs> I don't like any of them. One of them has an audiobook though, I realize, because it's kind of a classic novel. The others have a really low readership, but the, what was it? The King or the Prince or the Three Somethings? That one has an audiobook. I'm gonna listen to that. That's what I'm up to. Let's check out the bookstore. I haven't been here in a while. Actually, this isn't a bookstore. This is Value Village. I love this cover so much of this book. I've never seen it in person. So much more than the one I have, but it's junky. <laughs> Feel it though. It's like. Rob just finished reading Fourth Wing and he thinks that he's a fantasy guy now. So we gotta pick out some good things for him. Inside HBO's Game of the Thrones. You don't even watch the show. I know. <laughs> you probably give that book. I do have that book. She's coming out with a new book after like 10 years. It's really exciting. I'm gonna get this one because I need to read it. I think it comes, it came out in one of the years that I need to cover for a five star thing. I heard a lot about Wally Lamb recently and I've never read from this author. But I feel like I've been influenced. Now, I don't donate books to Value Village. Yeah, we don't donate. But I will buy books from Value Village. And I found the craziest thing. I've had my eye out for this book for so long. Online, I've been searching for it, trying to find a good deal. And I've never even seen this cover before. But like, it's here. This gets recommended in tandem with like, House of Leaves and S and stuff. Like there are some pages, why can't I find one now, that look like this. Like how fun is this to read? So I got that and then I got this one. I've been recommended what my bones know a lot. And then in Bolo and Bowie, I have another book by her. So behold the dreamers. Don't ask me the plot of any of these books. Excuse me, sir. What's the plot of all those books? I don't know. Oh my God. How dare you? Creaky. You should put eight books in there. <laughs> Why eight? Good Here's everything I'm getting rid of. It's a lot of arcs and then just random like teen stuff, romance stuff. Ooh, this one's that local book that's absolutely terrible. Oh my god, so many are gonna fit in here. Ooh, there's goosebumps. Do I need these? Probably not. I'm using one of my new books for bookmark pictures today. There's some really pretty ones here that my mom just made and they're going up on Etsy today. So while I take some pictures, let me tell you about this. This is The Tale of the Tailor and Three Dead Kings by Dan Jones. Now, I like books about books. I like to learn about the history of books. I like to read about people's opinion on books. So it was great that um, the first 20 pages of an 80 page story was the history of the original text. So Dan Jones came across this collection of ghost stories. They're like medieval, 500 plus years old. And there was one in there that he liked, but it was kind of vague. It didn't have a lot of I don't know, description. The characters didn't have names. And so he decided he was gonna rewrite it for a modern audience or originally for his children. So he sat down in one day and wrote this story and fleshed out um, 
the original. And the original is then also in the back. It's in Latin and it's only five pages, which is just very interesting. Um, I don't know who decided this needed to be published. It didn't. Like if you're gonna say I wanted to flesh out this story and make it into a real tale, a real ghost story, like what do you, that's not what it was. Basically there's this tailor and he's, his name is Snowball and he's riding on his horse and he comes upon um, a, a raven, a green dog, a man with a candle-like melting face and that's it. They're going through the woods, they see a raven, they see a dog, they see a man. Don't know how that was even 50 pages. I guess each story like is you know, it doesn't take up the whole page every time. But then he also still left some blank spots for names, which there's a reason for, but like just an odd choice. Just just an odd story because it wasn't actually a story. It was just words on a page and I'm giving it a two because I like to know the backstory of how it happened. I don't think I would read more from Dan Jones um, if he decided to publish like all of his retellings. It was very weak. I'm shocked it's a book, but it's cute and it got me to buy it. So that's that. Back to the bunny book. I need to read something I can finish today for my vlog. It's already 7 p.m. My bedtime is in three and a half hours. I actually genuinely think I deserve a prize for finishing this. It's a bed and breakfast mystery. So it's not really fair my rating because I didn't read the first two books. This is number three. So my confusion with all of the characters and stuff could probably be quelled. Quelled? Is that the right word? Um, if I had read the rest. So I don't know, like I want to give it a one, but I'm going to give it a two. I thought, oh, how cute. You're following somebody who owns a B&B. &B. It's going to give like Lorelai Gilmore vibes and but solving a mystery in each book. No, this woman is terrible. Judith, I hate her. I can't imagine reading another book about her and like all the other characters are also terrible. It is 1992. Not that that's an excuse, but um, I just don't think this book published today would be written in a similar, in the same way with a lot of just like bigoted stuff going on. Somehow I picked up the book in the series that has um, a gay man who has died and I don't care. I'm going to spoil this. Um, it was his husband who killed him. And at the beginning, when they find the dead body, stabbed, but this is him. Um, he stabbed his husband. When they find the dead body, it's a woman. It's like the teacher. It's like a local teacher at the church. And they're doing all these Easter festivities and our main character is responsible for getting like the eggs and putting on the hunt and stuff. And there, like, there are some fun, you know, little um, jokes and phrases. And at one point, Judith tells someone to go suck an egg, which is my father's, one of my father's favorite phrases. But she's like known as a local teacher. And they go, oh, when they did the autopsy, they found out she was really a man. And I was like, what? What are we doing with this? Like, what are we talking about? And then they just kept talking about him and using he him pronouns the entire time and talking about this man they were like oh he was a man and i was like no he's not a man like he that's obviously a trans woman you're talking about but the more they talked about it like it turned out it it was a man and he was dressing as a woman because they wanted to get an inheritance from this woman who just died named emily which like why is it the, this the fourth book this week that i've read where i was main pretty significant character named emily emily recently died and um the character, can't even remember his name now, Joe or John, there were so many J names. He didn't want his mother, grandmother, Emily, to know that he was married to a man. Well, they're not really married, um, but in their mind, they were married. They've been together for 20 years and just didn't want her to know that he was with a man. And so Sandy agreed to dress up as a woman living in this town, um, so Emily wouldn't find out that they were gay. Anyway, I was just really concerned about the language for a while. And even with that not being what was happening, there was a lot of like weird, weird bigoted language around a lot of things. It was uncomfortable. And it could have been like some good representation. Like we could have had some great conversations, but it did turn out to be like his husband who killed him in the bunny costume. So as with a lot of books published in the 90s, the only gay characters are either dead 
or terrible. Anyway, that's not really what made the book bad. It's just like, it's not well written. There are too many characters for no reason. And there are so many just like domestic conversations, who's related to who and who used to date who. And I don't care. I don't think I would care if I read more in the series. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know we talked about Hater Kayla coming back and I regret saying it. I regret wanting it. This is the worst themed TBR I think I've ever done. But I'm hanging out on reading sprints with Monty and Aaron and I'm going to continue. Oh, they're chatting right now. Alan, you're a liar. You did not. So on the next sprints, I'm going to read the devil you know. I have an hour left in my 24 hour challenge and I will do it. That didn't even take me the full hour. Unfortunately, um, it wasn't great. The positives of it, buying it from a local author is fun because there's a lot of Canadian references in here. There's just like Canadian celebrities mentioned like, hey, that guy looks like blah, blah, blah. And then there was a lot of mentions of hockey and Tim Hortons. And as someone who also has unfortunately taken a pregnancy test in a Tim Hortons bathroom, I related to that girl. <laughs> there were nine stories, I think. And they're all just about random, a lot of them are about pregnancy, about um, having sex for the first time, um, being improperly cared about by your partner, getting out of relationships that aren't good for you. The first one opened up with a woman going to her mother's funeral and the idea of kind of being judged beyond the grave by family members. They were all just contemporary slice of life. Uh, a lot of like young women just getting to know themselves and what they want out of life. It didn't do a lot for me. They all read kind of like journal entries. I think that's how they were supposed to come across. Um, a couple were written from the perspective of men and I just don't think that the voice of those characters felt super authentic. I'm, I don't know. At this point, this video is terrible. I'm giving it a two. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. The thing that I've learned is um, not, I've learned my lesson. I mean, that's the takeaway for the video is I'm not going to buy books like this anymore. It was fun to get five books out of the closet. They're probably, they're, I mean, they're not the ones that any of us were excited to leave the closet. And obviously none of them went well, so I can't go on to recommend any of them to you. And my average rating for the year has gone down. So more negatives than positives for this vlog, but I don't know. Thank you so much for being here. The next one, I can't tell you is um, much better as far as the ratings of the books. <laughs> it's gonna start out with a one star, but at least there's like more content and like lifestyle stuff. So love you a lot as a friend. See you later, bye.